What up, Laker Nation? It's your boy, Detail. I'm back with another post-game recap. As the Lakers fall to the Phoenix Suns uh, again, 140 to 111, um, you know, the poor keep getting poor. That's basically what it is, man. Um, told you guys this this had the potential to get blown out in the first in the first quarter, especially with the small ball lineup crap. Um, and for some reason, we just don't learn from it. But to be honest, this was a completely different team again than the one that played the other night versus the Wizards. So it's everybody's fault. The coaching staff, the players, you know, this is just a team we have to be dealt with. That's why when people were telling me pregame to get more excited, I was like, I'll wait and see because they we've seen this before. They have a good game versus Washington, turn around, and we completely lay an egg versus the Phoenix Suns, an actual good team. So, um, but, I, you know, I, I just – it has gotten old to the point where I've uh, I've numbed my feelings for this roster now. Um, the losses don't feel as bad when you don't have any expectations. That's the only thing I can tell you guys from watching these games. But let's be honest. This game was lost from the beginning. DeAndre Ayton and everybody killed us in the paint. I mean, these guys had – let me see. They had they ended up with 70-plus points in the paint. You can't win like that. 76 points in the paint compared to our 36. Clearly, that is where the game is – being one right they're being one in the paint they're playing efficiency basketball that's why they're a contender and we're not that's the difference right there we're over here settling jacking up threes turning the ball over playing sloppy as ever they're taking care of the basketball finishing inside getting second chance points and obviously exploiting the small ball that the lakers for some reason never learn to go away from you know so it's unfortunate but the lakers continue not to learn from their mistakes and we continue piling on i mean it is what it is. We're not a good team this year. We ha we've we had some good wins, but that doesn't mean we're a good team. We don't do it consistently enough, and that's why I said it in pregame. I had people telling me I should believe more. I'm like, I'm being realistic, guys. This team is not good. Now, first quarter, we lost the game, guys. We gave up 40, what? What was it, 48 points in the first quarter? And the timeouts and the rotation still sloppy. We still didn't see Dwight till what, like the second half? Um, We still don't go to size. And again, I thought it was funny because in the first quarter when the game started, we started off 6-2. I'm like, okay, is this team going to come out with some energy? And sure enough, Russell, Russell Westbrook starts breaking the next three to four shots, and, and the momentum goes away like that. And so I tweeted that out in the moment. And boy, did we have like uh, the beehive come after me, right? The nest of bees of that is Russell Westbrook just, just started spazzing out, talking about, I don't know, basketball, and he's not the reason we're losing. That's not even what I said. I said – we started off good, and Russell Westbrook killed the momentum, which is what has didn't happen in all season long, especially from their favorite player, Russell Westbrook. So that's just a fact. Now, um, <clears throat> you know, I think it's hilarious how people get offended when it's just the truth. Truth of the matter is, yes, the team sucks. We haven't played good, and it's not all on one player. But that one player takes a huge slice of the pie. And uh, the fact that, you know, people still get offended over the facts, bro, that's that's, that's – Really puzzling to me. I guess they want to keep lying to themselves. But I'll tell you this. The coaching staff and Russell Westbrook are two of the major problems with this team. Coaching staff don't make adjustments on the fly. They don't do anything. Um, and as far as you already know what I got to say about, you know, the break master. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, what can we expect from this team, guys? All year they've been doing it. We win one impressive game. We lose three wins. Three. I, I feel like two more losses are coming the way we've been playing, man. It just, it, it's just – it's not – this is not ideal for Laker fans, but like I said, we have to take victories where we can. Now, tonight, what am I going to do to cope with this? I'm going to go and watch Winning Time. I think they posted up another episode. I haven't checked, but I'm going to go watch episode two, um, you know, and relive the the good memories, man, because hopefully we make some more of those uh, heading into the summer with, with the mentality that we have to change things around. This just isn't going to work long term. You know, everything we have is, is ridiculous, man, on the team right now. Well, there's no camaraderie. Everybody's playing for themselves, and we – occasionally show up for the for the you know for the televised game here and there but not really um <clears throat> he said not gonna lie as embarrassing as a loss was i know that if our shots were not falling uh this would have been a lost cause which it was there's there's not a lot of room for um you don't have a lot of margin for error when you play in a team like Phoenix, all right? Let, let's not forget that they've been playing together. They've had this team for about two and a half seasons, three seasons. Um, so they kind of know how to play, you know, together as a unit. On the contrary, this team was just formed this summer, and we have a bunch of individuals that are trying to get theirs instead of worrying about getting a dub, right? And you know what I'm talking about. I don't have to throw my shots. Um, but bottom line is, listen, 
Um, the ro- the rotations don't help at all, man. The coaching doesn't help at all. The fact that we didn't go out and sign a Moses Brown or somebody like that doesn't help at all. We're la- we're thin at the front line. We're lacking a shit ton of heart, and <laughs> there's no game plan for the half courts. So if it ain't in transition or off of uh, stops, we're not getting much. My boys say AD is missed, big time, man, big time. Clipper fans are just, bro, y'all, y'all really got to create new profiles to come and give me some views. I mean, I'm flattered, right? But I am your daddy. Uh, he said, LeBron ain't even trying to play team ball. He's just trying to get the scoring title. Probably. But I'll say this, man. Um, I'll say this about LeBron James. He's 37 years old. He just dropped 50. And he just dropped 39. I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is a stat padding game. It wasn't effective. Other people aren't joining the party. We're talking about uh, Russell Westbrook. Um, who makes 44 mil, right? Or 40, I don't know. I lost track. But Russell Westbrook had 13 points, two assists, two rebounds, four turnovers. That's trash, man, for a max contract. Other people got to step up too. And yes, we will be hard on LeBron when he plays like crap, Um, which tonight wasn't his best showing, but come on, man. We need everybody to show up. And not only that, the, again, the coaching holds us back so much. You know, it, it's horrible. It, it's just, it's to the point where, I don't even know what I'm watching out there as far as game plan and strategizing and calling the timeouts at the right time. I mean, he lets the opposition go on 10-0 runs before he even considers calling a timeout. At that point, we'd lost momentum. We're on the road versus a better team with more camaraderie, better coaching. It's going to be really hard to get back into that game, if you know what I'm saying, if you catch my drift. So, He said, Russ is just a role player getting 44 mil. I wish he was a role player, but he can't even be a role player because he doesn't want to buy into his role. Right, which is the true definition of a role player. Personally, they have nothing to lose at this point of the season. I just bring him off the bench. If he gets mad, so be it. Go ahead and opt out if you're that upset. If not, get ready because next season is going to be more of the same. Right. Um, but I would really bring him off the bench, try a new starting lineup, bring some size in there. How about some Dwight Howard in there? I know he hasn't been the same, but can you blame him when the coach gives him inconsistent minutes? He probably doesn't even want to play for this coach anymore. Um, it is what it is, man. I mean, we got to roll with the punches as a Laker fan. I'm here every night. I'm here with the little, you know, the same one Clipper fan always saying Lakers ride the short bus. I mean, what does that even mean, bro? If we ride the short bus, what does that make y'all? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you guys really think you have a legit shot every year. Stop it. <clears throat> LeBron plays little to, to no defense. Now, this is true. Now, this is true. I will say LeBron James at this point of his career, is focusing way more on offense, and he only plays defense in spurts. But can you blame him? I mean, they're playing him at the center position, right? They're playing him heavy minutes. He just dropped 50. That knee isn't going to get any younger. I mean, he's not – you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to make excuses for LeBron because he. if you're going to play offense, you got to play defense. But, man, we really just – we we riding LeBron like it's no tomorrow. We got to look at start looking at everybody else. LeBron just dropped 50. We gave up 140 points. That's everybody's not playing defense. And we're going small versus a team that has DeAndre Ayton. I told you guys pregame, don't be shocked that we get blown out in the first quarter with this small ball. I'm, I don't feel confident in it, in it at all. At least throw some size out there to compete. I know Ayton would have probably ate up any big we have on this roster, but at least try, man, because when, when you're throwing out a bunch of short players out there, they're going to get cooked, and that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. But, again, this it, it, is not a single – and this is what people don't get when I tweet shit on Twitter. It's just in the moment. And, and I mean it. I think Russ takes a huge slice of the pie on why we suck. He's not the whole reason. I've been saying it all year long. Um, LeBron James uh, takes a little bit of a slice because he wanted Russ here. Um, and as a result, we gutted our roster, took away some depth. Um, AD takes some of the blame, too, because the same reason they both wanted Russ. And not to mention that he's been injured. So that's another slot that's taken up a max contract you know, gutting out the team and, 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 and lack of depth. And then it's really hard. Now we expect the Lakers front office to go out there and make magic with what we have. It's like, bro, it, it, it gets to the point where, you know, it, it just is ridiculous, man. He said, I used to never miss Laker games. Even he said, even the day when we were talking, but now I always miss uh, the game because of West break. <laughs> I mean, look, man, a lot of people here are not going to watch the games anymore. I'm, I, you guys have been asking me for years. Even when we were rebuilding, we had D-Lo and all of them. Why do you keep watching? Man, I'm just – I'm addicted, bro. I'm addicted to the Lakers. I got to keep watching just to see if anything changes. 
something magical might happen, like LeBron dropping 50 the other night. I like to see the front office body language, the coaching staff, or whatever poor excuse of, of a coaching staff we have now, and see what kind of adjustments they make. I also like to see the young players play, Austin Reeves, THC, Malik Monk. And now uh, Wenyan Gabriel, hopefully he continues to get minutes because he hasn't got consistent minutes since we acquired him. But um, DJ Augustine, too. I mean, look, I'll say this about this team. And if anything else, we just want to see effort consistently, and we're not getting that. Again, we show up versus Washington. We don't show up versus Phoenix. It's the same thing, you know? Uh, he said Russ is the problem on offense. LeBron is the problem on defense. Man, this whole team takes a slice of the pie. I'll be honest with you, man. I'm just sick of, the, of everything. I really want the Lakers to make major moves this offseason. The coaching staff is a big problem as well, man. I, I'm over it. He said, Dan, LeBron fans be like LeBron got his 31. It's not his fault. It's everybody's fault because, like we said, he wasn't playing defense tonight, and he looked his age tonight. Even though he got his 31, they didn't come within the rhythm or flow of the game or with us competing. They came in a blowout, which is what people like to call stat happy. Me, personally, I can't really critique him too heavy tonight because he was the only one that had 30 for us tonight. Everybody else, was, you know, came up short. And, again, going small to me was the death of us, you know. Um, so that that is that's all I got to say, man. But who the hell will want Westbrook next season? I mean, he's an expiring contract. That sometimes – that sometimes is something that's, uh, believe it or not, I mean, Kwame Brown was an expiring contract, and we ended up landing Pau Gasol with him as the main piece. So you just never know, man. You just never know. We really got Clipper fa fans in here talking about Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson was an afterthought. I mean, he had one good year last year in the playoffs, and now you guys think he's the second coming of Jesus. Nah, bro, let me tell you something about Reggie Jackson. Um, He's not that guy. You'll see in the playoffs. Clipper fans are they don't they don't listen. I kind of feel sorry for them because they don't have their own uh community or forum. I mean, it's literally seven of them running the whole uh, internet. You see the same guy creating multiple pages. It's, it's almost really pathetic, bro. It's like I almost want to feel sorry for them, but then I remember how stupid they are. And I'm just like, no, I can't. No, no empathy coming from me. He said, Do I should start for the rest of the season and and just foul out trying? F it. I mean, yeah, we're at that point, bro. We're at that point where um, <laughs> we try anything. Uh, listen, somebody told me, what rotation should you, what should we run, Dan? I'm like, at this point, just bench everybody who's not trying. Bring in some G-leaguers, and we'll actually get some passion and some heart and effort. Bring in Mac McClung. Bring in, you know what I'm saying? Just do something, man. We got to do that. We got to try something out because at the end of the day, we're not winning games consistently. So what are we really battling for at this point? We just be lucky if other teams, right? We'd be lucky if other teams aren't winning as well. That, that'll that be the way we, by default, make the play in. And then on top of that, we're most likely going to make the play in where we have to win two games in a row to even advance. So that's going to be tough as well. And if AD, the good thing, we got an update tonight saying AD might. You know, um, AD might be back before the playoffs or right in time for the playoffs. So, I mean, that gives us a smidget of hope, but it's not like it's not like we're going to hope we get bubble AD or Pelicans AD back, right? He's going to probably have to ramp it up slowly. He's probably going to have some rusty games here and there. And it's all bad this season, guys, at this point. The Suns think that just because they are the league's top seed that they will win the championship. LOL, the Bucks will shut them down again. Yeah, I don't have the Suns winning the championship. Just like I called it last year, I said, usually it's the teams that have the most size and depth and the most aggressive superstars. That's the Bucks right now. They're still the favorite for me, especially with the acquisition of Serge Ibaka. And they still kept most of their size. They're still the favorite for me to come out the East, although I'm intrigued by other teams there. I'm intrigued by other teams for sure. I mean, you got Chicago. You got Miami. I mean, I'm intrigued. I can't wait to see the playoffs, especially in the East. And the West is a coin flip. We don't know who's going to come out. Uh, it could be Golden State. It could be Phoenix again. I doubt it. But it could be anybody, to be honest with you. Um, and I look forward. I look forward to seeing you know what comes of this what comes of everything man defense is the problem you will see that we they um that we can easily score 110 we just don't uh let the opposing team score it, everything man the offense is not that great either to be honest with you russ and the team did good uh lebron no actually russ did not do good today uh 50, shooting 50 percent is one thing but the four turnovers um the way we started the game earlier he kind of kills momentum people 
if you watch the game, forget about the stats. He only had 13 anyways. That's not impressive for a max contract anyways. But if if you uh, watch the game closely, I'll say um, that nobody really played good tonight. Nobody, not even LeBron, because, again, his stats came in, at, you know, after it was basically already decided, right? Um, had he been going off, I, I felt he could have been more aggressive to start the game. But there was a play where he called, you know, he has to be – Pulled out of the game. He wasn't getting back on defense. Even the announcers noticed. So, again, Father Time is undefeated, and it shows up in lapses. As great as he is and as great as he's been, it's going to get bring him down. And there's going to be times where he can't even run back on defense or he, he won't finish the play or whatever. But, look, the the fun the thing for me is, is that, you know, we, we knew. Coming into tonight, deep down inside, I feel like Laker fans knew that we were going to lose tonight. We hope for wins, like I said, pregame, but pff. did I see Caruso's return? Miss our boy. I did not watch that, man. I did not. Oh, just ignore the Clipper family. He's not getting to nobody. He doesn't know I get paid for his view. So, I mean, he's welcome here. I'm just going to keep blocking him. See, people out here, I, I guess I pissed off Russell Westbrook fans because they're saying ridiculous stuff. They're turning into politics and stuff. It's ridiculous, bro. You just can get blocked. He said, LeBron's body language early in the game, red blowout incoming. I do agree with that. And that, that's what disappoints me sometimes with LeBron. And I always call him out on that. The body language, we follow the leader. You know, so, yeah, unfortunately, he didn't come with the right body language tonight. Um, pin that on anything. You want to pin it on age? Go ahead. Pin it on the fact that we're playing a better team? Go ahead. I really don't care at this point what your excuses is. The bottom line is we don't get the results whenever, you know, the whole team comes out like this. And he is our leader, so. How much more do y'all want from LeBron James? I mean, we're like, listen, we just want consistency from everybody, not just LeBron James, from everybody. I mean, that's not too much to ask, is it? Or, or do you think uh, Laker fans are going to be happy with 150 uh, or 250 point games all season and that's it? We should just mail it in after that. No, we want wins. That's what we really want. But again, I'm not blaming this on any particular player. It's just we got to call them out on this little specifics. I mean, let's not be that sensitive, guys. Come on. Let's not be like those Twitter fans that just, oh my goodness, you can't say and you can't even say uh bad shot attempt because they're gonna swarm after you. It's ridiculous at this point. You know. He said, damn, how many accounts does flipper fans have? They have no lives, bro. I'm convinced that. Clipper fans, all seven of them, have created every single account on the on the internet with different pictures. They probably cropped from different people, and they're weird like that. I'm telling you right now, this guy's proof of it. I already blocked him like ten times. Just ignore him. He doesn't get any attention from his parents. He's probably a minor. Just ignore him, guys. Either that, or he's really an immature adult. Uh, but that's not on LeBron James. That's on the trash team. That's on everybody, Sherry. LeBron. Last I checked, LeBron is a part of the team. So the team is trash, and that's on everybody. You know, we can't just – and I, I get it. You're probably a LeBron fan, which I respect, whatever. But you can't just say, oh, LeBron's done his part all year long. Everybody else sucks. No, because the leadership matters. His leadership some games has been poor. You know, uh, it is what it is. You know, but that doesn't mean we're blaming it all on him. It's just tonight wasn't a great night for LeBron like the other night, right? And I've heard some people even say he only shows up for sucky teams, which I don't agree with. I've seen him play – Pretty amazing games all season long, right? All year long. Um, so I don't agree with that, but I'm not gonna go one extreme or the other. I'm not gonna completely exempt him from any blame, and I'm not gonna also, you know, uh blame him for everything. It just doesn't work that way. We have to be um, you know, intelligent, we have to be smart, and we have to just break everything down. Listen, the reason we lost tonight, besides effort, was because we went small ball, which is to our disadvantage every night. That's the main reason we won. Everything else falls in after that. Bottom line. And it's not about dropping 50. It's about effort, right? Defensively, especially, right? If you're giving up 140, you gave up 48 in the first quarter, you're not going to win any game. Any game. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. <clears throat> uh, Pablo still has hope. He says, not going to lie. Y'all can hate on me for this. I mean, we're not going to hate on you. It's your opinion. But... He said, there's something about this team that win the chip this year. IDGAF, what you say about this team? Bash him, sure, but me, something about this team will win. I mean, I'm not bashing him. I'm, I'm calling him out. We've been piss poor every 
freaking other game. We play one good game and two or three bad ones. I mean, that's not really bashing. I mean, bashing would be like, we're the worst team of all time. And, you know, I'm not bashing them. It is what it is at this point. I'm done. I'm done thinking that we could be better than we are. But, I mean, listen, if you if you believe that this team still has a chance, man, I'll pray for you, bro, because uh, I already know what the outcome of this movie is going to be. We'll get it eliminated at some point. We are not winning the championship with this inconsistency. You got to start building habits from the start, and that's even in, in summer uh, camp, preseason, everything. It starts from there, and then you start building good habits, and eventually you get to your peak of basketball, and you and then that's how you win a championship. This team not winning a championship. I can guarantee you that they're not a miracle. Everybody on the West would have to get injured, their main stars besides the Lakers, and we would have to be healthy in order for us to have a chance just to get out of the West. That's just a fact. <clears throat> our roster has too many. Yeah, I do agree with it. We needed more size. We we didn't get enough size, and the size we got wasn't good enough. If DeAndre Jordan, no, you know. Um, so we needed to get more size. Somebody mentioned Mo, uh, Moses Brown. That would have been great, but we didn't even acquire him. Who acquired him? I know some other team did, right? He said Vogel doesn't come out call timeouts on till we're at least down 0 and 10 negative run. I mean, yeah, the coaching staff has been atrocious. One might argue that they've been the, the worst uh, thing about this team. I mean, you could easily argue that, you know. He said, Tony Bear without LeBron team is button of, button of the buckets. I don't know what that means. Too many divas on this team. I do agree with that, Jose. I think. Players never put their egos aside, and everybody just out there thinking that, especially you know who, especially Westbrook, he thinks that his career precedes him to the point where he, you know, nobody should tell him anything. Like he he shows it. I mean, listen, last night, not last night, when we played the Washington Wizards two nights ago, um, they asked Westbrook what he thought about LeBron's historic performance, right? Dropping another 50-point game within the span of a week. He's he basically just wrote it off and said it was whatever. In other words, I don't want to paraphrase him because I don't remember the exact same quote, but he basically just wrote it off. I mean, what kind of teammate are you, man? You know what I'm saying? And I think, believe it or not, and I don't want to cause no stir, no drama or nothing, but I do believe that LeBron James took a shot at Russell Westbrook because of his poor uh, leadership qualities and his inability to take responsibility and just deflect to the fans and everything. LeBron said that Laker fans know good basketball. They also know bad basketball, and they have a right to feel however they feel. I don't know about y'all, but that to me sounds like a shot at Westbrook. That, that sounds like he's saying, listen, Russ has been immature. In other words, you know, he's been, he's been immature about it, and Laker fans have the right to let him hear it, you know, or me or whoever plays bad. And I respect LeBron for that because at least he took accountability and he said, this is a great fan base. Don't get it twisted. But they're educated. They're not going to cheer for garbage, you know. And 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 so that's what ha that's what happened with that. And then you see Russell Westbrook look pissed um, in the post game conference. If y'all haven't seen it, go ahead and check that out on YouTube. That's a jealous teammate to me is a bad teammate because you can't be happy for others even when you're struggling. Then don't expect others to be happy for you. And that is how you create a rift in the locker room, which I think has been there all season long. And that is how poor chemistry is built, which translates to the court. All right. If teammates like each other and they play for each other, that will translate to wins or at least very good competition. Right. Very good competitiveness. If they don't, then you, this is exactly what you get. A lot of late game losses, some blowouts. Once in a while you get a, you, you know, you, the, the hen will lay a golden egg, the goose. Right. But that's once in a while. We're not getting that consistently. And people try to tell me we were going to win the championship. I'm like, no, we're not going to win the championship. I think it's very apparent now. Uh, I'd just be happy if we if we competed. It would be a miracle if the Lakers won a championship. The way we're we're so currently put together so poorly, guys. And that is not me hating or nothing. That's me being a real Laker fan. You guys know me for years, man. I've always kept it real with you guys. So I got to keep doing that. You know, my reputation precedes me. I keep it real, whether it's good news or bad news. But I always stay positive. I say, hey, we got little things, little victories. LeBron dropped the 50-piece last game, and we got a dub. Um, you know, the young players can keep developing and we're taking looks at, at, uh, you know, some projects like Wenyan and Gabriel. So you got to take the little victories amongst everything. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do believe Russ is attitude is really horrible attitude and his fans attitude. Cause I can't even say one thing without getting insulted about Russ, which I don't give a damn. I mean, I don't know these people that don't know me, right. They can say whatever they want, but 
when it gets to the point where we won't even be able to critique players because player fans are so toxic and they're basically attached from the you know what to their players it's like they're dating them bro it's weird i've never my whole barbershop talk my whole life we've had you know the homies come over we talk about basketball every everything is always open dialogue and even a little trash talk but man like i'm telling you man social media is becoming so toxic where it gets to the point like people don't even watch the games they just look at the stats and be like somebody tell me russell westbrook shot 50 percent. you're out of your mind clown did you watch the game it wasn't a good game you know you, you understand what i'm saying it's like Enough is enough with this uh, sensitivity and censorship. We are not going to censor anything, you know, uh, on this channel. That's a fact. So if you don't like me, tough, tough shit, you know. The Crowder continues to play some nice defense against LeBron James. <sighs> Listen, man, LeBron James is 37 years old. He just dropped 50. And, uh, you know, he looked a half step slow tonight. And we played him at center, which is bad. I don't, I haven't liked that all season long. That's going to wear him out. I wouldn't be shocked if his, if his knees are bone on bone when, when we get to the playoffs, man, at this rate. Dan, a coaching change and a roster change was necessary for turning things around. Overall, the team is old and Dwight should have gotten playing time. I agree. I agree. That's why I really wanted something to happen at the trade deadline and was disappointed. But upon further hearing that teams were trying to take us for a ride and we didn't make a deal, I was good with it, man. It is what it is. You can't always win. Listen. I'm a spoiled Laker fan because we all are. We're expected winning every single season, but we're also realistic. And we know when we can recognize when this isn't our year. This isn't our year, guys. Point blank, period. We 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 held out to the bitter end to see if we can turn things around. We're like, okay, we're going to get Anthony Davis back. Hopefully Kendrick Nunn will come back soon. Hopefully we start gelling. I even mentioned how Russell Westbrook was a late bloomer last season for Washington, and eventually they even made the playoffs. But – we didn't take into account the fact, like I said, that everything was off from the from the beginning. I mean, we we were we didn't get a single victory in preseason. That should have been a big <laughs> that should have been a big eyebrow raiser if you think about it, right? We had so much talent. We should have at least by accident got a victory or two from the talent we had. But that was going to be the foretelling uh, of the fact that we we weren't going to do much this season. And I know what people are thinking. Well, preseason doesn't mean shit, Dan. Sometimes it does, especially when you're bringing a new team together. You start building that camaraderie. Coaching staff starts nailing down the rotation pieces. Still don't have those right. So everything, every, every, every single thing has gone wrong this season. And we're just, we're still here strong as a rock. <laughs> you know, we, we're we're going to be here. And that's why fan bases around the league hate us. Look at the loyalty. I mean, we still have 380 people in here live right now. By the end of the night, it'll be over three to 4,000 that have watched this video. If I don't tell you that Laker fans care about their team and that haters even care about our team because they're here, you know, uh, like, listen, I'm not on nobody else's chat. And I actually, my second favorite team is the Knicks. But you, I don't even have time to be on their chat. If you're on somebody's chat, you must really care about them. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like elementary school when uh, when the little boy used to pick on the little girl and they ended up getting married, you know, 10 years later, 15 years later. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's like that, like, bruh. We know you're you're infatuated by us. That's why you're here. Uh, that's for the haters. But for the Laker fans, I mean, this just shows the loyalty, man. This has been an atrocious season. We still here, proud, head head held high, man. Still out here waving our banners and representing, bro. That's how it's gonna be. And they keep asking, why? Why do you do it? Why? It annoys them because they're not real fans. Real fans won't even ask. You just show up, man. You just show up, right? It's like a family get together, man. Even when you're fighting with your family members, you're gonna show up to the little cookout. Because you love them. That's the bottom line. <clears throat> he said the Knicks are basically the Lakers of the East. I agree with that, man. And aren't they like in a similar place where they're trying to make the play in, but they're kind of losing games they shouldn't be losing? It's the same shit. Season has been a complete disappointment. I'm right there with you, Timothy. Absolutely, bro. And, and I don't expect anything different at this point. Just the occasional, you know, impressive game from a superstar like LeBron would be nice. Here and there, but it is what it is, man. He says, sometimes I go to other teams' channels to suggest trades that favor the Lakers. <laughs> that shows you how much you care about your squad. And I'm not saying you're a low life if you go to other people's channels, uh, other teams' channels. No, I'm just saying I personally don't have the time, um, nor do I care about any other team like I care about the Lakers, right? That's just me personally. But it's just it's weird. Like when I see people creating multiple accounts, I'm like, wow, that's like a, a lower level of loser. That's the three L's right there, lower level of loser. 
Like you got to make 10 accounts just to try to troll me. And it didn't even, bro, you didn't penetrate. I'm like Superman out here. It didn't bother me. Russ sucks. He said this. We know my girlfriend does not know basketball, but she likes to watch to see what crazy mistakes Russell Westbrook makes. That's what's up. Hey, that's how they start becoming fans. So keep her watching, bro, because I think it's interesting. Sometimes they're not fans, but they start taking interest in a certain player or a certain team, and then eventually they become diehard. So I think uh, your girlfriend will eventually be a diehard. That's what's up. Congrats to Gate KG on getting uh, Jersey retired. Yeah, Lakers, Knicks are a disappointment, and congrats to LeBron 10K assists. And that all gets lost, man. Sadly, LeBron's doing amazing things, and it gets lost in the sauce because we're losing, right? Congrats to LeBron James 10K assist. But it's probably not even going to get talked about tonight from Laker fans because not because we don't respect his greatness or not, but it's because it's been such a watch of a season. But that's a huge accomplishment from the king, man. I mean, people acting like uh, it's so easy to get that amount of, of assist and we see that every day. No, it, it's truly a, a special accomplishment. I just wish it was happening during a winning season so he can get the love he deserves for that, man. You know, that's my, that's the only thing. I wish Monk would shoot more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, Dan, is your girl a hardcore Laker fan like you? Nah, man, that's impossible. I'm a freak. I'm a specimen. I'm a different type of Laker fan, bro. It's not a lot like me, but she's a casual. She's a casual, man. She'll watch every now and then. I'm not going to sit here and cap about it. Um, it to be fair to her, though, she, like it, she's she's been with me for the last couple of years. Uh, the years that we've sucked. So she hasn't really known true Lakers glory. Like we had one good year and that was the year we won the bubble championship. Right. And so other than that, like all these years she's been with me, but she don't, she'd never seen the Lakers glory that I grew up on, uh, you know, in 1996, all the way up. So I can't even be mad at her for not being a diehard like me, but I just think, uh, I, I hope that one day she becomes a diehard like me. Cause that would be awesome, man. <clears throat> he said, love the new single. Thanks, Luke. I appreciate you for listening, bro. It, it really helps the algorithm and it helps me get my music out there. If you guys share it, like it, some even bought it. I appreciate y'all, man. It means the world. If y'all haven't heard it yet, it's called Black Magic. It has nothing absolutely to do with magic. All right. <laughs> Just for, for the people that are going to say some hater shit like, oh, dance into black. No, it's actually talking about haters uh, attributing our success to black magic, which it has nothing to do with. But, um, but I, I listen, I love it. It's a me metaphor for the hard work we've put in in my life. A shout out to the homie Lonnie. He got down on the second verse with that as well. Um, I, I really love the track, man. It's called Black Magic. Type in DTLF and then Black Magic, and it should pop up on all streaming services, man. Uh, I think it's even in P Pandora. I don't know. I paid to get it all up out there, so it should be up there, man. Let me know. I love the feedback, so let me know what y'all think. Some even suggested I should drop it on YouTube. I might do that because some people don't use other uh online services so i might just do that so everybody can hear it i'll think about it is it on my playlist it's not on my playlist i haven't dropped it here on youtube because it's an official track that i own the rights to the ones here i was just goofing off and and, and having a good time drop doing music but i really took that song serious i bought the beat i i produced i i master mixed it down and everything and i dropped it man. it's my first official professional track that that I hope bumps one day in radio stations and, and parties and stuff. I mean, that'll be the dream. Like the video, he said, this team is almost unwatchable. That's true, Tony. That is true, man. I don't I don't know a lot of casuals still watching this, man. But the diehards, we right there, baby. And even some diehards have stopped watching it. But, you know, it is what it is, man. I can't judge people. I have really thick skin, and I could take a lot of pain, man. Uh, people don't know this, but one time I, I went to a dentist in Mexico and they didn't have any anesthesia and they did surgery on me when I could feel everything, man, in my gums and everything. It was uh, it was torture, man, to say the least. It was like that one movie. I forgot. It's not called Saw. Hostile. It was like hostile, man. It was torturous and I survived that shit. My mom was all worried. She was like, oh, you look pale. She was like, stop the surgery. Bro, it, it was it was a torture. But I listen, I could take anything. Man. I've been through it all. And, uh, and it's really, I think it's a blessing, man, to, to, to have these opportunities to shine. And, and the Lakers season ain't nothing to me, man. I've seen worse, believe it or not. Not in a sense of expectations. This is the most disappointing Lakers season as far as expectations go, because I expected so much, right? Second place would be the Steve Nash, Dwight Howard team. But this is the most disappointing based off of expectations. But if we're talking about overall teams, this isn't even the worst. We've seen worse, man. 
Yes, sir. From the 310. That's right, Kevin. <clears throat> Thanks, Tony. I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that, Tony. The Greg Popovich really got the most all-time wins. That's only because Phil Jackson's been out of the league for a, a certain amount of time. But I guarantee you, man, we've seen the GOAT of coaches. He used to run the triangle offense. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Laker fan. I'm saying that because the man has 11 championships as a coach. I mean, the record speaks for itself, right? But congratulations to Pop. I personally don't like him because he was over here snitching on people, talking about don't trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers. So he lost my respect there, but he is a great coach. <clears throat> he said, me, you, Kevin, Tasia, we diehards. We ain't going nowhere. Man, everybody in this channel watching me at this point of the season is a diehard. Even the haters. They might not know it, but they're diehard Laker fans in the making because they're so intrigued by my channel that they show up even on a sucky season. Think about that. Think about that. Phil Jackson is the GOAT of coaches. He will always be. I mean, 11 championships? 11 championships. Bro, nobody's even close to him as far as coaching goes. He won five with the Lakers and six with the Bulls. That's 11. And if he hadn't retired when he did due to his bad hip and all that, I think he would probably be up close to 15. That's how great he was. Um, that's always going to be the GOAT of coaches. But, yeah, respect. I respect Popovich. He's also a great coach. He's just kind of an asshole. I, I don't like his persona and the way he carries himself. He, I think he's a little snake. I mean, making those phone calls and all that really showed me his true colors, man. It really did. So even though I respect his acumen, his basketball knowledge and all that, as a person, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of him. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Keyword, I'm not sure because I don't know him personally. Maybe if I knew him, I'd love him. I don't know. <clears throat> Imagine Phil Jackson with LeBron. I mean, a man can dream, bro. A man can dream, right? This is why I got excited when I see him walk through those doors. Um, but I don't know if that'll come to fruition. We'll see. This summer is going to be very telling. Appreciate you, Evan. Thank you so much, man, for the support over the years, guys. You guys are truly spectacular. I mean, think about it. We still got 300 people in here. It's 9 o'clock p.m. Pacific time in the East Coast. Shout out to all you guys still watching me, man. It is, it's later down there. So that's some real ded dedication, and, and that just shows me how much you guys truly love this team just like me. What are we waiting for to fire Vogel? Well, from what I heard, Zion, um, I heard that the Lakers weren't going to fire him to the offseason if they do, which I think they will. Um, I just, I'm not sure if they don't want to pay somebody or they just don't want to go through the process, but I think the earlier, the better. I mean, they could have put somebody as an interim coach. And then if that didn't work out, they could have hired somebody new in the off season. But I think they just want to go through the whole process with time. Probably. That's just my theory. I don't know. I'm not, I can't really say for a fact, since I'm not in the Lakers organization officially, like I'm not within those walls. But that's just from what I see, you know, from a third person view, third person perspective. So, Dan, if this team still sucks next year, it's going to be fire Palenka all season. <clears throat> I do agree with you. I think he's on a strike two. I think this this offseason is going to be a strike three. If he strikes out, I think that's it. I think he'll be out. High expectations for Los Angeles at all times. And I think this is what player fans fail to realize. When you come to Los Angeles, there's just a different beam that lights on you that's never been there before. Russell Westbrook fans probably thought it was going to be all sunshine and rainbows. But when you get to L.A., you're expected to produce now. It's not like when you were in Washington or in other cities like Houston, where as long as you get your triple doubles, you're exempt. No, we truly care about our team, man. We are a passionate fan base, and we care about our squad. And if you don't care about our squad, then we're not going to care about you. Is that simple, man? That simple. <clears throat> Can we just fire Vogel right now? Shake my head. Kid should be fired. Phil Jackson and Phil Handy. I mean, I'd love that, but it hasn't happened, and I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. <sighs> Jibs, appreciate you, bro. He said, Dan, you the GOAT of all Laker fans. That's a high honor, man. I don't even give myself that crown. Uh, you know, there's there's others that have been here before me, So, but I do appreciate the sentiment. Uh, he said, you the reason I be having hope with the Lakers when they had bad nights like this. Thank you, bro. Hey, man, it means the world. We we got to uplift ourselves, man. We are family. You know, we have to uplift ourselves. It's a long season. What good would I be if I just came on here like the trolls and started piling on? Yeah, we lost. So be it. We still got 17 chips behind us to back us up. I mean, my back is feeling good. I could just lean on those whenever I want. You know what I'm saying? I don't need that back support. 
I'm good, man. I'm good as a Laker fan overall, even in the losing season. I remember a couple years back when Kobe retired, the kids in the neighborhood would talk shit to me. They'd be like, why are you wearing all that Laker gear? Y'all trash anyway. I'm like, I can tell you don't have cable because the future's looking bright. That's when we had the young core. Um, and then, you know, they would all laugh at, at themselves. I would roast them, right? Because they were trying to come at me. And you know me. Um, so we always... Laker fans, one thing about us, this is why we're so hated. It's because we don't wilt under pressure. We don't crack. We don't break. You can't make us cry, bro. You're never going to, you know, sit here and watch me cry. Like, official tears. Unless something really tragic happened, like, God rest his soul, like when Kobe passed. But outside of that, man, you can't break a Laker fan, bro. We are, like, <laughs> we're we're insane, bro. We just, we, we like Superman with no kryptonite. You just can't break us. And they hate that. They they love fans that are flip floppy, wish washy, who they can break your spirit, and then you can go choose another team. That's what they would love. The loyalty just drives them nuts. Ten accounts were just created just to troll me. That ain't proof of that. I don't know what is. So I appreciate you, bro. He said you should have been around for the Magic Johnson and Kareem James worthy days. I wish I was, Stan. I truly wish I was, and I envy all you old heads out there, man. Major love and respect to y'all because y'all been around forever. Y'all seen this story before, and so you already know that what I was talking about was true about how we would rise again. We're like the sun. Even when we set, we'll come right back up, right? So y'all knew what was up, man, and, and I appreciate all the OGs because they know I'd be speaking facts. I'm like the gap between both generations, right? The Gen Zers and the Millennials and, and everybody beyond that. I, I like try to bridge the gap because... It's all about love, man. It ain't about age difference or or all that, you know. <clears throat> As a Laker fan, I'm grateful to witness the 09 and 010 championships. They were the Lakers' glory days, man. I'm I'm grateful to witness everything that I've witnessed in my life. I've witnessed a total of what was it? Six championships in my lifetime when some fan bases haven't even witnessed one. Think about how grateful we are for that, man. I've witnessed six. You know, obviously the 99, 2000, 2001, 2002 championships. And obviously the ones you just mentioned, and then the one in 2020. That's a total of six. I've been blessed enough. So again, if they think I'm gonna wilt under pressure, they can create a million accounts. I block them all. <laughs> it's not gonna get to me, bro. Cause uh, I've seen the glory days, and I know I'm gonna see the glory days again. It's only a matter of time. Now, hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later. And I'm talking this off season. We can build like this, cause all the trolls are gonna magically disappear. They're going to pull a Harry Houdini watch. You ain't going to see a single Clipper fan, just like last time. I was here when they got eliminated last year in the playoffs. They were talking smack when we got eliminated due to injuries. Well, they got eliminated, and they magically dis- – I didn't hear about a single Clipper fan until the next season. It's my favorite sound of silence, man, because I'm always running my mouth. Win or lose, I'm here, man. Y'all know where to find your boy. People ask me sometimes, are you going to show up after this atrocity? Of course, man. Now more than ever, ever people need to hear the voice of reason. Right. So, yes, sir. We're going to rise again. I feel good about my team always, even when we suck like this year. And we suck. There's no mincing my words. We suck. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all and be like, oh, we're actually, you know, I'm not going to be like Stephen A, who actually thinks that if LeBron and AD are healthy, they're going to make a run because everything else is out of order. It's hard to make a run in spite of Russell Westbrook and Frank Vogel. You know what I'm saying? And then everything else will fall after that. So, you got to have a solid foundation all the way around to make a deep run in the playoffs. I've been watching basketball my whole life, and I can tell you, man, the teams that always win the championship, this is why I'm so good at predicting them, are the ones that are the deepest from, from A to Z, man. I'm talking 1 through 15 and, and beyond. Why? Injuries happen. Uh, you know, sometimes players are getting cooked and they need to get rotated out. Um, adjustments, everything matters in the playoffs. The game slows down, so there's a lot more uh, – you know, cerebric, it, it, cerebral, I'm sorry, that's cerebric. I'm thinking about bricks now because of rust. See, I'm traumatized. It's more cer- cerebral, guys. The game is a lot more cerebral, and you really have to think it out, and you need the best of the best to be able to break those uh, half-court defenses because the game slows down. And that's what the Milwaukee Bucks had last season. Let's see if they can repeat this year. And I got the popcorn ready. I'm still excited for the playoffs. Obviously not as excited as if the Lakers were in it, but I'm still going to break it down. So subscribe to my second channel, Primetime TV. Space DTLF. Check it out, guys, because I'm going to be breaking down post-game recaps and everything on there. I like that. My boy came back with the classic. He said, the jello is definitely not jiggling. I appreciate that that uh, comment right there. Yes, sir. Shout out to Chick Hearn, the greatest commentator of all time, man. Um, He said, the Heat are the deepest team in your opinion? I mean, 
They're solid. You can never count out the Heat. They got Bam out of bio. They got Jimmy Butler. They got Spo. You know, and and I think Tyler Hero's having a, a breakout year. I mean, they got a nice little squad over there for sure. So you just can't, you know, you you really can't count anybody out in the East. However, I still got Milwaukee coming out until you know the, the champs are the champs until somebody knocks them out. And I would be interested if somebody knocks them out. Who could it be? Because I I really don't see somebody who can beat them in a seven. Giannis keeps getting better and better. His team got better. Um, the coaching staff is solid. The rotations are solid. I mean, every they have everything to be able to repeat. You know, every, they have it. However, remember playoffs. They're tricky because injuries can occur. Um, all kinds of stuff can happen in the playoffs that can you know derail a team from the course of a championship. That's why I think championships are so special. Because when they happen, everything has to line up perfectly in order for that to go, right? Is Carmelo Anthony doing good? I mean, he's he's a lot better at home, personally. Defensively, he gets cooked, but can we blame him when they play him at center as a backup center? I don't like that position for him or LeBron James. They, they should never play center in their career, let alone late in their career when they've already lost all their athleticism. and Well, not all of it, but a lot of it. And they're not the same player they once were. It's like it, it just I, I question what are Frank Vogel's motives at this point. Like what what is he thinking, right? Hey man, if Kyrie plays somehow the home games, the Nets could do something. Well, you know what? Now that James Harden, one of my most disliked players in the league, aren't there, I wouldn't even mind if they came out of the East. I don't really like Kevin Durant's personality. He's very polarizing. You either love him or you hate him, but he's a very talented player. And Kyrie, y'all know how I feel about Kyrie, man. He's a special talent. Um I love Kyrie. All right. That's the bottom line. I, lo I love everything he stands for. He's he's one of the realists, and people call him crazy for it. I don't care. I love Kyrie. Um, and it would be interesting to see them in the playoffs, see what they do. Uh, I think the standings are going to matter, though. And I think eventually that'll be their downfall the fact that he's not playing all the games. And a lot of road games will be played in the hostile environments due to the fact that where they're at in the standings. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how far they go for sure. Um, now, as far as everything else, man, I still got I, – I can't see a team currently as constructed and if healthy, it's going to be really hard to beat the Milwaukee Bucks. I'll tell you that. He says, Cerebric, Westbrook's new nickname, classic. Oh, my God. I, I, I sometimes give people accidental nicknames, and they stick, man. Those nicknames stick. Like, Home Court Mellow, I was one of the first ones to tweet it out, and that nickname stuck. You know, because I was like, he's amazing at home. I think I should call him Home Court Mellow. And that name, now I see a lot of Twitter uses it now. I don't know if somebody said it before me, so I don't claim it, but I was one of the first ones. I'll say that. Dan, do, uh, do you bring back Mello under the right coaching staff and circumstances? And if we address our frontline, you know, uh, lack of depth, yeah, I bring back Mello. I think he's been phenomenal for us, especially at home, especially for his age. He's doing great things, man. He's hitting, He's hit some clutch shots this season. He's had some 20, even some 30-point games. I mean, the guy's been all over the place now. And he's even given us effort at the defensive end, of course. Playing him out of position at center is not ideal, but he's he's at least giving you that effort and that hard-nosed, tough basketball play. So I do appreciate Carmelo. I think uh, due to the fact that we have been struggling, we haven't given him his flowers properly, but he's been great, man. He's been great. He said, we Lakers have the most ugly small lineup ever in the history of the NBA, two super max can't shoot and play defense and three G League players. Well, I mean, <laughs> small ball just isn't my favorite thing, anyways. I always preferred man. I remember all the glory days when we had all that size and versatility, man. I, I don't know why teams teams have gone the Golden State Warrior way, but they have to remember you don't have Steph or Clay, and you don't have Draymond, which is crucial for that small ball crap. And also the other team I can remember that comes to mind before them that used to play small ball was the Phoenix Suns. And they also had a, a mastermind in Steve Nash running the offense. They had a pick and roll beast in Amari Stoudemire and a bunch of three-point shooters everywhere. So this is a player's league, but you have to adjust to what you have on your roster. If you don't have anything similar to that, why? You know? Why, bro? Angry Lakers fan, appreciate you, bro. He said, listening to you on my last break. Appreciate you, bro. He said, yes, you bring back Melo. He is balling. It gets lost in the sauce because we've sucked it up all season long. That doesn't mean that we can't give the flowers to Carmelo Anthony, Malik Monk, Austin Reeves, LeBron James, uh, everybody who's been phenomenal for us, Stanley Johnson, um, 
you know, we've had plenty of role players that I'd love to bring back. I think that should be the first order of business after firing Frank. But we also have to revamp the roster, get rid of some uh, players, you know, Russell Westbrook amongst many. Um, and we have to get more size, man. Enough with the small ball. The next head coach we get, I hope he knows how to utilize our lineup to the best of its ability. Because that's what the, the best coaches in the league do. They utilize their lineups to the best of their ability. Injuries, not a problem. We will adapt, right? That's what coaches said. A good coach will say that. A bad coach, a good coach will say next man up. A bad coach will say, well, this hasn't been fair. We haven't had Anthony Davis. We haven't had uh, Kendrick Nunn. We haven't had Trevor Ariza. Like, they'll make all the excuses in the book, but just use the tools at your disposal, sir. This is why we pay you the big bucks, where you can put the X's and O's together and just make the best of what you got, man. Make the best of what you got. What do they do in prison? They don't need the best recipe. You know, they don't need the best uh, items to cook up a good recipe, man. They use whatever they got at, the, at their disposal, man. They call them chefs. Is out there whipping up and cooking, man. You got to use whatever you got in, in whatever situation you at. So <clears throat> he said, do you trade the two draft picks to get rid of Russ? Or do you suffer another bad season and keep the picks um, as a Laker fan and not just a LeBron fan? As a Laker fan, I think we can unload Russell Westbrook, at least at the trade deadline. I'm not giving up two first-round picks just to unload him. We already got robbed, and we gave up one first-round pick on top of all the good role players when we acquired him. The last thing you want to do is you know, have to give up for Russell Westbrook in total three first-round picks and, and, and all those good role players. That would be so bad. At the most, I'm willing to give up one first-round pick because he is an expiring contract. People forget how that works. Teams actually like expiring contracts. I mean, we, we were able to unload Kwame Brown, for God's sakes. So that tells you everything you need to know about small contracts. You can unload a player, even if he sucks. So there's always going to be a team out there willing to, to you know, uh, get some sort of compensation, even if it's small, in order just to have a, you know. Remember, the NBA has a rule where you have to pay a certain amount of cap to players. So sometimes people run out of ideas and they just like, okay, Russell Westbrook's available. If they give us a first round pick or two second round picks, we'll take it. Or if they gave us, I don't know, a specific role player, we'll do it. Let's hope that opportunity arises for the Lakers because God, if we have to give up two first round picks and we don't get a star in return, I'm going to be irate, man. I'll probably make a ranting video, which I haven't done in quite a while. So I'm proud of myself for that. He said, might have to, but lottery protected. I do one. Kevin, I do one max. Two is too much, man. Two for an aspiring contract to, just to unload it, that's all bad. I mean, you'd have to be one of the worst GMs of all time to get robbed like that. Bring back Damian Jones. We need size and youth like that. I agree with you there. I definitely do, man. You know, I, I definitely agree with y'all. Any final questions before I get off, though? Really quick, man, before I get off, I want to say one thing. Major shout out to my uh, sponsor, Price Picks, man. Making my dreams come true out here, man. I uh, appreciate y'all who actually have joined the chats on my second channel and participated, man. Some of y'all have won money and send it and send me pictures of it. I, man, I'm happy. If I can help you in any way and y'all help me in any way, truly appreciate it, man. For those of you that haven't joined, now's your opportunity, man. Price Picks, best daily fantasy sports app out there. Check them out. Promo code DTLF, man. Guaranteed to give you 100%, uh, you know, Cash match guaranteed up to 100 bucks. So check them out. Do yourself a favor. And secondly, man, I want to end it in a positive note. Again, dreams coming true slowly, but surely, man, uh, we're witnessing greatness here, man. And I humbly talking about my track I just dropped. Y'all go listen to that tonight, man. I don't know what to tell you. Black Magic, iTunes, every, every other platform, man. None come to mind right now, but every platform is there. Check it out. Type in DTLF Black Magic. should pop up. Let me know what y'all think, man. Drop it in the comment section. Final comments before I get off. He said two second-round picks should be enough to unload Russ's contract. Yes, sir. He said he angry Laker fan says he could have been traded this year if his contract had a team option instead of a player option. That is a good point, man. What the heck was OKC thinking, man? I don't know what they were thinking, giving up that type of contract, but I guess it was a legacy deal based off of what he did in the past. <clears throat> Hopefully a win tomorrow, bro. We need everything we got, RJ. We need we need every victory we can get. But anyways, thank you guys so much, man, for tuning in again for all the support. Don't forget to smash the like button and share the video and like and subscribe if you already haven't. And I'll see you guys, man, for the next one.